All right, in this video, we're going to prove this theorem that any matrix whatsoever can be represented as a product of an orthogonal matrix Q and a symmetric matrix S with non-negative eigenvalues. And we'll do it by discovering an algorithm for constructing these matrices. And along the way, we'll come to the conclusion that this decomposition is unique. In other words, there's only one orthogonal matrix Q and only one symmetric matrix S with non-negative eigenvalues, such that A equals QS. And the entire construction will really be a tribute to one of the points I made in the previous video, that while this theorem has an unequivocal geometric interpretation and a very straightforward geometric statement, it's nearly impossible to prove it geometrically. And it's almost too easy to prove it algebraically. Now, the key to our discussion will be the concept of a square root of a matrix, which we discussed before. And we discovered that it's possible for any matrix that has a full set of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and all of whose eigenvalues are positive. And the matrix square root of M is a matrix that has the same eigenvectors as M, and its eigenvalues is the square root of the eigenvalues of the matrix M. So in order to construct the matrix square root of M, we will need to use the eigenvalue decomposition. We'll take our matrix M, compute its eigenvalue decomposition, then take the square root of the middle matrix. In other words, we'll take the square root of each one of the eigenvalues of the matrix M, and then rebuild the matrix square root of M by multiplying these three matrices together. So this decomposition is actually very much related to the eigenvalue decomposition. Even though the eigenvalue decomposition will be almost invisible in this discussion, but as soon as we'll say square root of some matrix, that means eigenvalue decomposition. And if we had to figure out this decomposition for some matrix A, the hardest part of the whole job would be to construct the eigenvalue decomposition of one of the matrices that arises in the course of this construction, which you're about to see. So this decomposition is very much, I would even say a derivative of the eigenvalue decomposition. All right, so let's get on with the proof or the construction of the matrices Q and S. So how, could, how would we come up with these two matrices Q and S? Let's pretend that we already have this decomposition and let's try to determine what properties the matrices Q and S would need to satisfy in order for this to hold. So we're kind of assuming we have these matrices already. And then by some algebraic manipulation, we'll try to lock these, these matrices into some relationship that we can then exploit. Well, let's first exploit the fact that Q is orthogonal. So we can take advantage of Q being orthogonal by somehow putting Q transpose next to Q. So how could we do that? What kind of combination, algebraic expression, could we evaluate so that Q transpose ends up next to Q? And of course, that combination, which in applied mathematics, you will see over and over and over again, principally because energy is often expressed by an, exp by an expression like this. So what I propose we evaluate is A transpose A. And before we even write down what this equals, and you can do it on your own and then compare the results, I just want to say that A transpose A is just a very nice combination. Because whatever problems A might have, it might be defective. It might have complex eigenvalues. It might even be a rectangular matrix with no eigenvalues or eigenvectors on the horizon. There is no such thing as eigenvalues and eigenvectors for a rectangular matrix, only for square matrices. So singular values are beautiful in that they work even for rectangular matrices, but eigenvalues and eigenvectors only for square matrices. So A could have problems even if it's square, defective or complex eigenvalues, but we can even forget about that. It might even be rectangular and then we're in a whole lot of trouble because we're, we haven't been able to say much about rectangular matrices. But once you evaluate this combination, all of the problems go away. 
because here we have a matrix that's symmetric as we've discussed before. A, even if A is rectangular, A transpose A is square. And not only is it square, it's also symmetric. And I want you to remember how to prove that. Uh, well, you would just evaluate the transpose of this matrix. The transpose of this product is the product of the individual transposes in the opposite order. And when you do that, you once again get A transpose A. So it's symmetric. And one property that we won't prove right now, but it's not hard to prove at all, we will do so later, is that all of the eigenvalues of the matrix A transpose A are positive. Intuitively, all of the eigenvalues of this matrix are positive because it's sort of like squaring A. It's squaring A in a sense that's even in some ways more pure than considering A times A. And I mentioned this before too. A transpose A is a combination that arises even more frequently in applications, and it's even a more natural combination to consider, and it's not surprising at all that it also works for rectangular matrices. Now, now that we anticipate all of these good things, what are the good things about symmetric matrices? They have a full set of eigenvalues, all of the eigenvalues are real, and uh, there you go, and all of the eigenvectors are orthogonal, or can be chosen to be orthogonal. All of that will come in handy, but now that we anticipate all of these good things about this product, let's figure out what it is in terms of Q and S. And of course it becomes S transpose. I won't write S transpose, I will just write S. Why? Because S equals S transpose. So it's just S, Q transpose, that's A transpose, times A, which is Q, S. And we have succeeded at putting Q transpose next to Q. And Q transpose times Q is of course the identity matrix. So in this product, Q disappears. And all we're left with is S. So all we have here is S squared. So what is S? Well, S has to be the square root of this matrix. And this matrix is tailor-made for taking square roots. What do we need? A full set of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, which we're guaranteed because this matrix is symmetric. And we also want them to be non-negative, which is also the case here. Just a moment ago I said positive, but the reality is non-negative. So this matrix is perfect for taking square roots, and that of course will lead the matrix, yield the matrix S that we're looking for, because it's the matrix such that its square is necessarily A transpose A. And this is where the uniqueness of the whole thing comes from. If we have this decomposition, then we must have S squared equals A transpose A. And then it's not hard to show at all that there's only a unique symmetric matrix with non-negative eigenvalues such that its square equals a given symmetric matrix with given eigenvalues. If we didn't constrain our eigenvalues to be non-negative, then we could play with the signs of the eigenvalues when we take the square root. For example, if 9, if one of the eigenvalues of the matrix S squared, then in our eigenvalue decomposition we could turn that 9 either into a 3 or into minus 3. And then uniqueness would be lost. But because we stipulated non-negative eigenvalues, there is really only a single S, good thing to think about. We're not going to go over it right now because it's a little bit of a detail, but that guarantees the uniqueness of S. So S is unique and it equals the square root of A transpose A. And do you see how our algebra is carrying us through the entire discussion? This proof really writes itself, this construction rather, writes itself. And yes, we're writing a casual square root, but we have to recall that this is actually a very laborious construction. You have to find the eigenvalue decomposition of the matrix A transpose A, take the square roots of the middle matrix in the entries of the middle matrix, and then multiply it back together, and that will give us the matrix S. And there you go. So now we're halfway through. We're actually seeing where the matrix S comes from, what it necessarily equals. 
and it necessarily equals the square root of A transpose A. So in constructing this decomposition, we already know how to construct the matrix S. And here it is. And once you have the matrix S, how do you construct the matrix Q? Well, if you have any hope of getting the matrix A as this product, Q must be A S inverse. Q must be Q must be A S inverse. So let's think about what's left to be proven. So we might be given a matrix A. Let's talk about square matrices A. We will construct the matrix S according to this. This is guaranteed to succeed. This is completely bulletproof. This is a symmetric matrix, has a full set of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. They're non-negative. We can take the square root. There's no problem here. We'll always have the matrix S. All right. The matrix S might not be invertible. Okay, so that's one case where we would have to specifically consider what to do. For now, let's ignore that case. I should have thought about it before and mentioned it at the beginning of the video, but let's consider the case where the resulting S has not only non-negative eigenvalues, but actually positive eigenvalues, which would happen if the matrix S is itself invertible. We'll get back to this detail a little bit later, but now let's assume it's invertible. So we'll always be able to multiply A by S inverse in that case. And then we'll have our matrix Q. And then are we done? Well, we are done if the matrix Q is actually orthogonal. But can we see that, this mat that the matrix Q is necessarily orthogonal? Well, it's not, it doesn't, it's not obvious. But let's evaluate Q transpose Q and see what we get. If we get the identity matrix, then we have a matrix that's orthogonal. If we don't, then we don't. So let's see what happens. So when we evaluate Q transpose Q, well, what is Q transpose? It's S inverse transpose. Think back to a few videos ago. This matrix is symmetric. Therefore, it's inverse is symmetric as well. So S inverse transpose is the same as S inverse. So we have S inverse followed by A inverse because after all, the product, oh, excuse me, transpose. The transpose of the product is the product of the individual transposes in the opposite order. So A transpose, excuse me, times Q, which is A S inverse. And now I'm sure you see what's happening. We have A transpose A, which is S squared. So we have S inverse, S squared times S inverse. Of course, everything cancels. And it's the identity matrix. So Q, thus constructed, is indeed orthogonal. And because S is unique and Q must satisfy this relationship, then Q is unique. So right now, we accomplished all of our goals. We came up with an algorithm for constructing these matrices Q and S. Along the way with the caveat that A transpose A, which equals S squared, is invertible. We came up with a unique symmetric matrix S with non-negative eigenvalues. And then by this combination, we ended up with a matrix Q that's orthogonal. So we've come up with a way to construct the matrices Q and S proving that this decomposition is possible and also showing along the way that this decomposition is unique. So all of our goals have been met and all of them have been met rather easily through very simple algebraic manipulations, which really shows off the power of algebra and especially the power of algebra when working closely with geometry because every element on the board has a very clear geometric interpretation, which makes this entire algebraic manipulation meaningful. So that's the power of algebra and geometry working together. That's the big picture, but the specific goals of this video were accomplished. And we have proven that any matrix A, in this case invertible, we'll work out that detail later, can be represented as the product of an orthogonal matrix Q, and a symmetric matrix S, 
with non-negative eigenvalues.